Welcome back to the Homeschool Advantage Podcast. I'm your host, Bex Buzzy. Today's guest is Zor. He is CEO and founder of Unizor. The intent of Unizor is to provide students with advanced educational materials while enabling their parents or supervisors to control the educational process. Unizor contains both educational materials for students to study and plenty of functionality to facilitate supervisory control over the education process. Parents or supervisors can enroll their students into courses and follow their process of learning, then determine the next step in the study of new materials. In this episode, we talk about how Unizor can be used in any classroom, but especially flipped classroom environment. Also, how these resources are exclusive to Unizor teachers to help students that they are working with, as well as how Unizor is derived from the purpose of math education, because the logic and the critical thinking skills you learn in mathematics is vital. So go grab your coffee, go grab your tea and a pen and paper, because you're not going to want to miss what Zor has to say. Let's get into the podcast. Zor, say hello to our guests and tell us what's a fun fact that most people don't know about. Okay. Hi, my name is Zor, Zor Shechtman, and um, I'm basically a founder of this uh, website, unizor.com, the educational website. Now, what's the most fun about it? I don't know. Let's talk about name first. Um, well, Zor is obviously my, my, line, my, my name. That my, it's abbreviation, actually, of my first name. And the uni is, um, well, a universe, a university, which is kind of educational thing. And then there is one more company which I really like. It was called Unisys. This is an old company. And at some moment in the past, the name of this company was quoted as one of the best names for the company. So I kind of liked this idea and I decided to use this prefix uni for my name as well. So that, that's kind of a, the beginning of the story. I and, love that. <laughs> yeah, people and- liked it. Yeah, you have such a dynamic and amazing way of thinking about subjects that maybe people don't find as creative or fun, but you've taken a way of revamping the way you think about, like, let's say physics and math and really bring out the qualities of creativity, logic, the analytical thinking and help students, you know, just increase in their knowledge and just become a lot smarter in this area and to be able to, you know, apply it to real world living. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Sure, absolutely. Um, The thing is that I consider mathematics as the most um, artful and creative form of art. Why? And let me explain why. It's a very simple explanation. Now, what do... um, artists and the sculptors are, are actually doing. They are trying sometimes copy whatever is in the universe around them, um, but sometimes they're doing something on their own and it's a pure creativity. Now, mathematics is a pure creativity. I mean, nothing which is basically part of mathematics exists in reality in, in, the, our, in our world. Um, mathematics is is dealing with abstractions and abstractions like point, for instance, or a number or equation or something like this. Now, all these are abstractions, which means they are produced by our mind. We are not repeating anything which which, uh, the universe around us has already done. There is no such thing as as an equation in the universe. I mean, there are certain laws and we express these laws as equations. But to come up with this is a pure creativity. So mathematics, which is completely different in this particular uh, aspect from all other, um, well, uh, kind of activities of uh, of the our, of, of, of people, it's the it, it's the most creative, if you wish, form of art because it's completely outside of the existing world. It's all from the our minds. And that's why um, creativity is probably one of the first things which is developed by studying mathematics. So that you mentioned this as a, as, as a key word. Creativity is in the, in the heart of the real mathematics. 
Real mathematics is not calculations. It's not like arithmetic or anything like that. Real mathematics is abstraction. And we are dealing with abstract objects by connecting them together and uh, expressing this connection as uh, equations or whatever other way we express it. And then if we are lucky, it can be applied to real life. Like for example, calculus is very much applied to physics, but that's something which people were basically developing uh, completely independently and then applied to something which really exists. And that's the beauty of mathematics because you can also not just create something which is completely pure uh, work of your mind, but also contribute something into uh, learning about the universe. But only if we are lucky. Not like every aspect of mathematics has a has a real purpose in, in, in real life. What does actually has a purpose, the, the state of mind, the creativity, the, the analytical skills which are developed using the mathematics, they are actually used in the completely different areas, um, whatever, engineering, architecture, uh, seafaring, whatever. Everywhere people have to solve certain problems. Solving a problem is a, a, an act of create, creative process, basically. And solving problems in mathematics basically teaches you exactly this type of skills. It's the same thing if you're going to a gym you are preparing your, your muscles, your stamina, et cetera, for certain real, real world problems, real world tasks. You don't really do in the real life what you do in gym. It's completely different things. But we go to gym to train our muscles, our stamina, our um, whatever other, our physical qualities to apply them in the real life. Same thing with mathematics. It prepares your mind to solve real life problems. So that's what's very important. And then I continue this as the physics course, just to basically show how it can be applied, how the real uh, world can use the knowledge which is developed by mathematics. So that's a just very general kind of um, answering maybe your question or something like that. <laughs> that was to awesome. Prompt, <laughs> they want to prompt something else. I mean, I have <laughs> lots of answers to these problems. You're, that was amazing. That was honestly, I, I I never would have been able to explain it the way you did. But it was it's literally as you're talking, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, he's putting words to the way I think about things because I a hundred percent. I every one of my students, I always tell them, you, when it comes down to math, really pay attention because math is going to give you the skills you're going to need for problem solving in life, like. It, it, you need to pay attention and you should work on it every day. Every day you should be surrounding yourself with mathematics because that, and honestly, I know, I remember for me when I was in college, if I didn't do mathematics, if I didn't do calculus, when I was doing calculus, if I didn't work on it every single day, it, it really did fall to the cracks and I wasn't able, I still had to go back to where I left off. I couldn't, I could not go ahead. And that's what I love about math. It actually is, scaffolded within itself within itself it, there is a scaffolding you can't go ahead you have to go through you have to go through the process you need to work it out so you need to and those skills I remember when I was doing really well in math I was doing really great in my history class I was doing good in English all my other classes were so much easier for me to to do because my logic was so sharpened like my understanding on how to think was so sharp that every other class became easier for me. And I began to realize I'm like, wait, I'm doing really good in math and now I'm doing good in all classes. And I'm I'm barely, I'm barely even like paying attention to all my classes. I'm really putting a heavy focus on math, but my other classes are really benefiting from it too. And I'm able to see things that I normally was weren't able to see. And yeah, my creativity did grow. And I it it was just Everything you said was like perfect. Like it was perfect. Uh, right. Um, and let's be honest. Uh, whatever mathematics uh, is uh, in school, um, most likely uh, in the real life, it will not be used as is. I mean, how many times I was right. uh, I was solving quadratic equations in my practical life, and I was working with computers, financial, etc., which means kind of you know, yeah, really deep stuff. Never 
never a single times I have to solve the quadratic equation for the real practical work. It, right. I'm not saying that it never actually used. Maybe some people do use it, but right. it's a rare occasion. Now, students in school definitely understand it. And that's the problem. You see, they're thinking that if you are not using exactly this particular thing, mm. life, why do I need it? Okay, maybe to pass the test. So I pass the test and then forget about the whole thing. <laughs> okay, let me return back to my comparison with the gym. Now, if you are, um, let's say, uh, running on this uh, moving track, I mean, how many times you do exactly this in the real life? Never. Right. Unless maybe in some airports, there are some moving <laughs> tracks. But let's forget about that. That's exception. But usually never, which means what? You, you don't need it? Of course you do need it. Because in many times you have to run for something. You have to do whatever other fast thing. And that teaches you, that trains you, your muscles in this case. So mathematics is teaching your mind to do something completely different. So you have some other problems to solve. And that's the key to how to teach mathematics. Because unfortunately, in many cases, in our schools, mathematics is taught like a set of skills. Like to get this, you have to do this. Right. Basically a memorization kind of yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. Denying that memorization is needed. However, right. that's not the skills. Because if you will forget about this after test, then it's completely lost efforts. Right. But if you train yourself to, to solve problems, to prove theorems, to understand how this scaffolding, which you just mentioned, is really built, starting from certain axioms, using certain rules, and coming up with more and more advanced um, statements about objects which you are dealing with, well, the more your mind is prepared to do something completely different, how to build buildings, or how right. to you know, make certain uh, new software application. So uh, for certain purposes because again our real life is solving problems i mean if you don't if you don't wow. know how to solve problems your life probably would be really a, a very very low quality so if you know how to solve problems you can advance yourself to heights you never actually even dreamed about and again mass and especially solving problems and proving theorems uh in in whatever the uh, process educational process is is the best probably probably the best teaching uh, approach you can do to develop all these qualities and that's why i put my course mathematics math for teens math for teenagers math for teens I, I put it in such a way that i think i don't uh state anything which is not based on something which i have already either proven or stated as an axiom, which means it's a very logically built. If you sequentially go through the course, um, the way how the menu is actually drives you, you will get exactly this very, very strictly rigorous process of logic. And that's extremely important, I consider, because, well, just give me an example. Uh, a couple of days ago, I participated in some um, deposition for, for a trial. I mean, what is deposition? Deposition, you have to really explain something which you know or you don't know. And it must be done in completely logical order because if somebody asks you, why do you say it? That means you have failed. You have to really explain it in such a way that nobody asks why because it's completely self-explanatory and logically driven one uh, statement from another, one statement from another. And that should be no, no questions why. And here is a very important methodology which i myself experienced with my teacher back in school like whatever 60 years ago the methodology is the following not just solve the problem but write it down now but it's very important to write down your solution but write it down in such a way that no one can ask you why did you write this particular line uh, because it's supposed to be completely uh, in the real text whatever the language you're using it's supposed to be explained in all the details. So if you're saying that this is because of that, and that is because of this. So everything, whenever you put as a reason, must be either known from some textbook as a basically something which you have already covered before or proven exactly during your um, proof or, or solution or whatever it is. So writing down 
is extremely important for basically disciplining your own mind. Because whenever you're just talking, it might not necessarily be, you know, like a complete story. But if you're starting it to start to writing it, that actually disciplines your mind and putting this mind on a very, very logical way of um, progressing. And it's extremely important in the real life. Again, you have to prove something to somebody. You have to understand that there are certain questions people might ask, and you have to really answer these questions before people ask them. You have to really think about everything somebody can challenge you with you, be, be, before somebody does it. And that would be basically a solution and, and the way to success. Such wisdom. Honestly, that's really a lot of wisdom there. And as, as you were talking, I, I just could not stop like nodding my head. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Wow. Wow. And, and, and it's, it's so, it's just so logical and practical, but yet you're, you're bringing, you're taking the abstract and just making it like, I can see it. Like I literally can see these abstract, um, you know, concepts, which I think is amazing. And you teach, you said you teach math for teens and you also teach physics for teens, Right. Yes, that's correct. Now, after I have finished uh, math to the level, I think would be, well, definitely covering more than it's necessary for high school. It's probably a little bit more towards like, like a first level of university or something like this. So after I completed it or almost completed, I decided to basically it's interesting to apply whatever the knowledge we have with mathematics, apply to the course of physics, which would be reasonably, again, reasonably uh, rigid and logical, et cetera. So I called it uh, something like uh, physics uh, through a looking glass of mathematician, something like this. So, yeah, I mean, the, the, the motto of math is creative uh, mind through the art of mathematics. And the motto for my physics routine is um, physics through a looking glass of mathematician. So again, as a, as a mathematician, I can actually explain things more logically, more rigorously, and, and, and that's what I was trying to do. Um, the problem is that um, it uh, actually forced my, me, myself, to learn a lot, which I did not really learn in my school, because my school was more mathematics. But now I want physics, so something classical physics of Newton, mechanics, etc., that I knew quite well. But when I went to a little bit more advanced things, like electromagnetic field or something like this, I, uh, I, I actually had to learn a lot myself. But after I learned it, again, my purpose was not just to learn, but to be able to explain it. And uh, I think I'm actually very proud that something like Maxwell equations for electromagnetic field, I think I was able to explain absolutely logical and very much understandable as far as yeah, I can judge, basically. And I had so many different, very positive um, uh, statements from, from people who really listen to these lectures. It, it's like hundreds and hundreds. I, I, I put something like examples, I think, in one of the my emails to you. Yeah. But, um, but uh, I yeah, mean- Yeah, I have that, them right here, actually. It's 1% maybe of everything. And I really did not have a single negative um, comment about this. So yeah. it, basically, I think it's it's really kind of a very significant for me to get to get all this feedback. Yeah, so, um, I have hundreds of these messages, very positive, and uh, it, and it's very satisfactory. So math um, is relatively finished. Physics, uh, I think, I would like to present a little bit more information, but it goes towards more advanced things, and I don't really know where to stop. Quite frankly. <laughs> Because, you know, theory of relativity, which is like 20th century physics, Einstein, etc. cetera. Um, I would like to touch it at least a little bit, um, but I don't want to go too far because right. it's teenagers. Uh, but it would be interesting. I mean, before that level, I think I have explained more or less whatever uh, people can uh, can learn. And one more thing, probably yeah. very, very important. Even if, the, even if there is a lot of information and a lot of different uh, theorems, proofs, qualities, etc. I think, and, and definitely gr much greater than in traditional high school uh, presented, I still think that our mind has unlimited capacities. And with proper approach to education, 
and obviously desire from the student side, which is very important, um, people can learn a lot more than they are usually learning right now in most of the, uh, of the schools. So uh, for instance, somebody told me that uh, in one of the schools, at least they were talking about the geometry uh, completely lacks any kind of proofs in school. They don't learn how to prove these theorems. They mm -hmm. basically present a theorem as, as, a, as a quality. Like for instance, sum of squares of two uh, sides of a uh, right triangle equal the square of hypotenuse. I mean, it's uh, like A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Now that's presented as a property of the triangle, not as a theorem which really must be proven because it's proving of the theorem which really trains your mind. And uh, a property of, of uh, triangle, you'll forget anyway. So nobody needs it. So, you know, <laughs> in, in your life, you never measure triangles, right? I mean, or, or something like this. Most likely you don't, at least. Wow. Um, so it's not really needed. But what's needed is the process of education, which logically brings you from A to B, from B to C, et cetera. So that's what's very important. And if, and if you have a, a, a whole... Uh, road from A to Z, it's very important educationally, pedagogically, I should say, to present all the intermediary points from A to B, from B to C, etc. Because in some cases, people are saying, okay, A and then Z. And they forget about how you obtain the Z from the A. They forgot, they don't forget, they just miss completely all intermediary steps. And it looks like, uh, well, consider a child has to make a step. If it's a very large step, it will not be able to make it. But if in between these large steps, there are small, smaller ones, the child will definitely go up and up and up and get the reach and, and yeah. reach the, the top, right? So that's the purpose of the way of um, uh, education, which I, I think must be presented. Do it in small steps, very understandable. So every level would be achievable from the previous level. Just a little bit of an effort, but very achievable. There is no like huge gap from this level up to that. No, it's really like small building of scaffolding, which you just mentioned, um, to make it uh, more understandable and uh, maybe even more pleasant. I don't know. Yeah. As you're talking, you know, you're talking about some really difficult, um, you know, concepts, but you're making it so simply, simply understood. And I, I, I want to read a couple of the um, testimonies and the accolades that you got just a few months ago, like literally just a few months ago. Um, someone said, and I'm only going to read two of them because you have a lot of them, but and they're all I great. Have every, yeah. yeah, I have it every day. But I'm going to read two of them that really kind of stuck out to me. It says, you're mankind's angel. Don't stop your journey <laughs> at any cost. You are one in a million star like our sun. The way you are teaching physics, it will help thousands of minds to understand physics in a very easy way and will help reduce physics phobia from the planet. He was like the planet. He or she, I don't know who it is. Then the other uh, one says, <laughs> yeah, the other one says, your way of taking the viewer through the logical chain to get all the concepts across is very natural and easy to understand. I think this is fantastic because you're taking some really hard concepts and you're bringing it down to, like you said, um, taking it small uh, steps and everything. Small steps. So where yeah. can parents or where can people who are wanting to connect with your your work, your information, where can they go to find you and be able to connect with all the things that you have, all your resources? Okay, so there is only one website, which is called unizor.com, U-N-I-Z-O-R.com. Uh, 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 it's a totally free website. I uh, do not have any advertisement because I think that the educational process should be completely devoted to education. So it's free, it's uh, uh, no ads. Now, even sign in is not really necessary unless you would like to engage in certain functionality, which is also part of this website. This functionality is a supervised, supervised learning, so to speak. So you can have um, not just person basically learning the stuff and doing whatever is necessary, then you don't need even to sign in. But if you would like something like a parent to have a supervision of the educational process of a child, 
uh, then there is a way to basically specify, okay, I'm signing in as a parent or a supervisor. Now this sign in belongs to a student and I'm supervising that student. So in my um, profile, there is a student's name. In student's name, there is a profile of the supervisor. And then the supervisor can, uh, first of all, assign certain parts of the of the uh, um, of the website to, to to learn. For instance, one particular lecture or a set of lecture which comprise one particular um, chapter or whatever. And then there are tests, exams. There are exams which people can take as many times as they want. And the results of these exams are accessible by the parent, by the supervisor. And the supervisor can say, okay, that's fine, let's move on, or read it again or study it again and take exam again uh, as many times as you want. There is no restriction until you will get a perfect score. So it's a supervisory style of parent-child kind of relationship is part of the functionality, and then you will probably need this signing in. But for people who can do it themselves, the, the road is completely open. There is absolutely no strings attached, not even the signing in. I love it. I love it. So as we're wrapping up, what is one big takeaway you want to leave with parents uh, from our conversation? Well, well, first of all, I consider that parents actually the primary customers of education of their children. They must be satisfied. And sometimes they're not, unfortunately. So parents might actually and should play a very important role in education. Now, this particular functionality, which I put in my unisor, like this supervisory style, is important. But no, it's not necessarily. But what's very important is that you can get, get a lot of knowledge by really doing something in the system which gives you this step-by-step -step progress and it's very important that you go exactly uh, how, how this particular process is arranged. You go in the logical order and you will succeed. I mean, I, I guarantee that the person who really put efforts and uh, go through all the tests, let's say all the exams, which this course has and succeeded in all of them will get absolutely perfect score on any exam, on any test, on any high school uh, in, in, in the world. Guaranteed. That's awesome. And I will have all of you, I will have your link, like your website in the show notes so they can just click it and it'll go right to your site. Zora, sure. it has been amazing talking with you. I feel like I've learned so much just in this conversation alone. Can I say one? Little, Please. Sometimes people are searching for something and they find my lectures on YouTube, let's say. That's fine. But if you find it on YouTube, you, you have only that particular lecture. But uh, in the beginning of every lecture, I am actually saying that, okay, this is part of the course. So mm -hmm. it's terrible always to go to the course, to the unisor.com and go through the lecture. And every uh, lecture, video lecture has a textual presentation right next to it, which is exactly like a textbook. So you have a video presentation and textual presentation of the same material at the same time which is, you know, very nice to examine afterwards. Awesome. Thank you so much, Zor, for being on the show today. It's just, been, yeah, it's been a real <laughs> pleasure. <laughs> If you love the conversations we're having here on the Homeschool Advantage podcast, follow or subscribe our podcast to stay in the loop and never miss this amazing content. And please highly consider taking a minute to leave a positive rating and review to help others like you discover this show. See you next time.